Okay, today we're going to convert a React component to TypeScript. This is a very basic component. Let me run you through what we have. Up top, we have a couple of actions. These are mocked. Eventually, you would have these, of course, in their own actions file. Part of this, part of this tutorial covers uh, the connect with Redux method. So we've got our mocked actions. We've got a basic stateless functional component that has three properties, client, update client name, update client age. This is a value coming from state. These two values are coming from their, their dispatch functions to be sent to the store. Our basic component here is presumably going to take an input of client name and age, and then when you click, it's going to update those names and ages. This isn't a very great component. This is just an example. The innards of this component aren't very important. So right away, there's nothing we can really tell about this component. Let's make this type safe. So I'm going to copy this over to our TSX file. I've got my TS lint set up to highlight errors. I've got it fairly strict, but let's just get started. So the first thing we'll do is convert import react from react to import star as react, which is something we have to do for the TypeScript stuff. Um, We've got, uh, these need to have a type definition for what they're returning. And we're going to just say any, eh, I'll say boolean. Add a semicolon. And this is all pretty gross. So instead of doing all this, I'm going to actually create some map state to props method. And I'm going to create a map dispatch to props method because I think it's cleaner. And once I create these two methods, I'm going to convert them into the shorter ES6 syntax of the implicit return. And instead of the stuff that comes with it, I'm just going to bring in the stuff I already have. Add some semicolons, get rid of this. Map dispatch to props. Oops. Map state to props. Map dispatch to props. Ah. Great. Okay. We still got lots of errors, but we'll clean this up. So instead of just passing these unknown values into our component, we want to actually make these more type safe. So let's create an interface called props. And actually, I'd like to pass just name and age instead of the client object. So this, this component can be even dumber. So our props, we're going to have name, string, and then let me type all these real quick. Okay, so we have our interface, name's a string, age is a number, and then these two methods are types of these methods. So when I hover over update client name, you can see it returns a Boolean. And we're still getting error because we haven't told TypeScript what kind of what we're returning. And we're gonna return a JSX element. That's quite verbose, but I don't particularly mind here. Alright, so we still have we can keep this like this. The other option is to change this to props. And I'm just going to do that with my props that are already defined up here. I already know what I'm going to what I'm going to bring in. Okay, so our component is better. Now let's work on this. So I'm not going to worry about own props at the moment. There's two things this thing needs. It needs a the parameters to be typed and the return value to be typed. So the state. Normally what I would have here is the structure of my state. I'm not going to worry about that, about that for this tutorial, so I'm just going to type any. A lot of times what I do is I type any when I'm developing, and then I go back after the fact, and I do searches for any and start to replace them to become more type safe. So any, and then uh, it's going to need a return statement. So instead of this up here, 
let's take a break and let's remember that we might actually want something else to come into this client editor. Let's say we want to pass in a value in the consuming component, something like this. So we want to pass a Boolean value whenever we implement this component. So let's add one up here. Now because our props here include things from state, things from dispatching, and then properties passed in from other components, it's not really clear what where these are coming from. So I'm going to split these up. So I'm going to create two interfaces down here. And we're going to cut these and put them here. And now our map state to props, we know it's going to return state props. Great. So now we know name is a string because it's here. We're going to do the same thing with dispatch props. Cut these. And put them here. We'll return dispatch props. And let's do a little, little bit of cleanup here. So dispatch, and import that. And normally, again, here we would pass the state, but I'm just going to pass any for now. So now we've got some errors in our console, in our, in our component. It doesn't know what name is. So all we need to do is extend props. And now our component is error free. So this makes it a lot easier when you're converting a component to TypeScript and you want to be sure exactly what you're bringing into your component. And you don't have to worry about what's coming from state and dispatch. It's a little bit of boilerplate, but to me it makes it a whole lot easier to determine what I'm getting from state, what I'm sending off to the store, and then what I'm getting from other components. Let me know your comments in the, in the comments below, and thanks for watching.